A few videos ago, I talked about the Satechi USB-C hub and how I love using it with my Mac Mini and I use my Mac Mini on all the stuff that I do for the channel. And as of recently, I no longer use my Mac Mini. So there's several reasons why I got rid of my Mac Mini. Number one is this studio space. I thought when I was able to get my studio space set up, which is separate from the house, I'm actually out in a detached garage uh, that you know, looks really nice. Painted, I put down some flooring. It's a really nice space. Studio tour will come at some point in time. I personally thought that when I had my own separate space to do my work, it would be a lot easier for me to focus and be productive and not have any interruptions. However, I have a small child and that's not really possible for me to completely shut myself off from the world and avoid interruptions. So what ended up happening was I thought I was gonna have a lot more time to work on other projects and the channel by having a separate dedicated workspace, but the actual opposite was true it was harder to get out to the workspace and it was a lot more difficult for me to be able to stay uninterrupted in this environment. I was also starting to run into some issues performance wise with my Mac Mini. At the moment I'm shooting everything in 4K because I like to be able to zoom and crop and I do all my editing in Final Cut Pro so for just straight editing making cuts things like that the Mac Mini worked fine. The internal graphics card is pretty laughable. It's really not a machine that's meant for doing any type of heavy duty video editing but I did buy the Blackmagic eGPU and I I thought that by pairing the two of those together, I would be able to kind of overcome that hurdle. And for a long time, it worked pretty well, but as I started to take on more complex projects in my business, I was really starting to hit a point to where the computer was unable to process certain things that I needed to do in a timely fashion. Also, the Mac Mini that I was using only had eight gigabytes of RAM and only 256 gigabytes of storage. So overall, I was really starting to kind of hit the threshold, the maximum that I could really push that machine to still be productive in my business in 2020. So just to quickly recap, I needed to change my form factor, I needed more RAM, I needed more processing power, I needed a stronger GPU, and I also needed more storage. Which all those reasons combined led me to purchase the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro. I'm sure there's a lot of folks out there who are Windows users. I haven't used Windows in, oh man, I don't even know. When did the iPod come out? That was when I ditched Windows is when the iPod came out. It's been almost two decades now. I can never go back to Windows. First of all, I edit totally in Final Cut Pro. Uh, Adobe Premiere is obviously available and that would be a way to make that switch. But I already own Final Cut. I've got lots of plugins. I love the way it works. I'm really comfortable in that environment. So Windows is automatically out for me. I have edited and used LumaFusion in a lot of projects. I really enjoy using LumaFusion on my iPad. It's a really great piece of software but in terms of some of the things that I need to do from a graphic perspective, it's just not something that could work for my workflow in 2020. So the configuration that I went with on my MacBook Pro, I went for the 2.3 gigahertz i9 processor, the 64 giga RAM, one terabyte of storage, and the AMD Radeon Pro 550M with eight gigabytes of virtual memory. So there was a trade-off option that I had. I could have went with the two terabytes of storage or with 64 gigabytes of RAM. I decided that since the RAM's not upgradable, I'll spend the money on the RAM and use external storage for the hard drive space that I need. I've only been using this computer for a couple days, but I've had MacBook Pros in the past, although it's been a really long time since I had anything larger than the 13 inch. And it's, it's definitely big, it's a big computer, but I will say that when I do work in the house, it's actually kind of nice to have a really, really big screen. And the speakers on this thing are actually pretty incredible for laptop speakers, they sound really great. So in the studio, I have a 27 inch monitor. And honestly, when I'm using a 16 inch in the house, it doesn't feel like I'm missing out that much on screen space. And I don't wanna beat a dead horse here, but yes, the keyboard it is pretty great. Now, one other thing that was really cool about buying this computer was it was the first purchase that I ever made from B&H Photo. I used to work for some retailers that were competitors of B&H, and so I kind of always grew up hating B&H because uh, we used to have to price match B&H quite a bit because their prices were always really, really low. This particular machine that I bought is technically a CTO or like a custom order from Apple. So if I were to order it directly from Apple, it would have taken almost a month to get here. At B&H, not only did they have this CTO machine in stock, I was actually able to apply for the Payboo credit card, which saved me from having to pay any sales tax. It was automatically refunded. There was already a pretty good discount on the computer price anyway, and it was in stock and was able to be shipped to me the next day. From a customer service standpoint, I didn't interact with anyone at B&H, but they did ship it to me the next day. It was FedEx delivered with adult signature required, so I felt pretty safe about the product actually arriving to my house with no issues. And the box that it came in was totally fine. There was no damage, there was no issues. Everything was super duper smooth. So I got the computer that I really wanted to get. I got it shipped the next day, and I got it for a really crazy discount and was able to save the cost of tax 
It was a pretty great experience buying from B&H. Check the description down below. I've got the link to this exact computer that I purchased if you want to check it out and look at current pricing for it. Even though I'm just getting started with this computer, I have to say for some of the things that I was unable to do on my Mac mini, immediately this computer just chewed right through it. It was so much faster. It just cut through some of these files like butter. It was pretty awesome to be honest. Now again guys, the Mac mini always will hold a special place in my heart, but for my particular workflow, I'm really happy to be rocking the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Thanks for watching. <laughs>